morning and welcome. Please join me in singing the opening hymn, which can be found on page number 363, Lord, who at thy first Eucharist. So Corpus Christi is right at the center of our Christian mission and our lifestyle. So we come together for that worship. Let us now call to mind our need for God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to be will of good will. We praise you, bless you. sacrament you give us a memorial of the passion of Jesus. 
Fill us with his grace, guide us by his light. He is Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, that is for you. Do this in remem remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, 
you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We wish to extend a very happy and holy Father's Day to all of our fathers, grandfathers, stepfathers, adopted fathers, and all who stand in their place. And indeed, there are many. These holidays of our culture are not exactly the high holy days of the church, but they do give us reason to pause, to pray for, and to reflect on our fathers whom we honor this weekend. Six weeks ago, we offered Mass for our mothers. Today, on Father's Day, we are doing the same, offering our dads, both living and deceased, on the altar of God, and invoking our Heavenly Father's blessings upon them. America seems to be unique in, in its honoring of fathers on a special day. So today, we celebrate, we congratulate, and we pray for the men who continue to reflect the divine qualities of a father as they nourish and sustain their families. Fathers are indeed a gift, and we thank them for blessing us with their lives of dedication, endurance, and love. I preached a homily on Mother's Day, and on that weekend, after one of the masses, I was asked if I was going to give fathers equal treatment on their day. And so, I thought, why not? So, please don't take any offense at any jokes or stories. It's all meant in good humor. But one night, one night, a wife found her husband standing over their newborn baby's crib. She kept silent as she hid in the back, just to watch him. As he stood there looking down at their little child, he did so with a mixture of emotions 
that were so evident on his face. He looked in disbelief. He looked in doubt and delight, amazement and enchantment, skepticism. And then he'd stand back and shake his head and simply say, amazing, as he smiled from ear to ear. She was touched to see this side of her husband. Her eyes twinkled as she slipped his ar her arms around him, and she whispered in his ear, a penny for your thoughts. Isn't it amazing, he said, when you take a look at it and you look really, really close, how can anyone make that crib for only $58? <laughs> While flying from Denver to Kansas City, Kansas, a woman was sitting across the aisle from a mother and her eight-year-old son. The woman, the woman can, couldn't help but laugh as they neared their destination, and she heard the mother emphatically stating to the boy, now listen, when we, when we land, you run to dad first, and then the dog. A little child was with her father for the first time at Mass, and she watched with open eyes as the ushers came down the aisle with the collection baskets. And when they neared the room where they were seated, she piped up and said in a loud voice so that everyone could hear, Don't pay for me, Daddy, I'm under five. <laughs> little Susie was mother's helper. She helped set the table when guests were coming for dinner. Presently, everything was in order and the, as the guests came in and then sat down to eat. Then the mother noticed that something was different. Something was missing. She said, Susie, you didn't put a knife and a fork at Mr. Smith's place. Susie explained, I thought he wouldn't need that. After all, Daddy says he eats like a horse. <laughs> a woman wrote to a magazine telling about an event that occurred in her family when she was merely about 18 months old. Her mother was out and the father was in charge of both she and her brother, who was four years older than she. Someone had given her a little tea set as a gift, and it was one of her favorite toys. Her dad was in the living room in the evening engrossed in the news, and her brother was playing nearby in the living room when the little girl brought her dad a cup of make-believe tea, which was just plain water. After several cups of this tea and a lot of praise from dad for making such a yummy, yummy concoction, the little girl's mom came home. Her dad made mom wait in the living room to watch the 18-month-old bring him a cup of tea just because it was the cutest thing he had ever seen. Mom watched, and sure enough, here came, comes the girl down the hall with a cup of tea for Dad. Mom watched his dad drink this special tea and then asked her husband, did it ever occur to you that the only place that baby can reach to get water is the toilet. <laughs> A group of fathers were gathered on Father's Day discussing why it was so good to be a God. Now, the women of the congregation would probably say, why? But let me explain a few of the reasons why they thought it was just wonderful to be a God. First of all, you can go to the bathroom without a support group. You can do your nails with a pocket knife. When clicking through the channels on TV, you don't have to stall at every shot of someone crying. There's always a game on somewhere, and if another guy shows up at the same party with the same outfit that you're wearing, you might become lifelong buddies. <laughs> yes, it's wonderful to be a guy. In Ernest Hemingway's short story, The Capital of the World, a Spanish newspaper, El Libro, carried a poignant story about a father and a son. 
And it went like this. A teenage boy named Paco and his very wealthy father had a falling out, so much so that the young man ran away from home. The father was crushed. And after a few days, he realized that the boy was serious, so the father set out to find him. And he searched high and low for five long months, all to no avail. Finally, in the last desperate, desperate attempt to find his son, the father put an ad in a Madrid newspaper, and the ad read, Dear Paco, meet me at Hotel Montana at noon Tuesday. All is forgiven. I love you. Signed your father. On Tuesday, at the office in Hotel Montana, 800 Paco showed up, <laughs> looking for love and forgiveness from their fathers. What a magnet that ad was, over 800. Well, it simply it reminds us that Father's Day is a time to realize we need more fathers who are loving and forgiving. A father tells of taking his three-year-old son to see Grandma and Papa, and while they were visiting, Grandma and her grandson decided they were going to bake cookies while Dad and Papa watched the football game. And upon tasting a sample of the first batch, the three-year-old held out the cookie and is in a loud voice so that everyone could hear. He said, damn, this is good. <laughs> Had almost picked Grandma off the floor. Father jumped from his chair and corrected his son, said, that is not a nice word. Where did you learn that word? And the boy instantly replied, I learned it from you. You say it every time, Mom cooks supper. Or, tell me this, what will this child, in this scenario, remember? The family goes to Mass every Sunday and every holy day of obligation. They say the rosary, they talk about Christian values at dinner time, and then on Saturday night, when they go out to the movies, Father tells the cashier that his son is under 12 years of age for the discount price, when in fact he's really 13. Now tell me, what makes the biggest impression, the lasting impression, on this young man? Was it what he heard all week, or what he sees on Saturday night? Father's Day simply reminds us of the need for fathers to be true role models 24-7. And a person tells how, as a young boy, his father's birthday rolled around, and he didn't realize it until it was too late to buy his father a birthday present. So he went through all the resources that he had, and he came up with 17 cents. So he put the dime, the nickel, and the two pennies in an envelope, gave it to his father with the note. I love you, Dad. Happy birthday. Thanks for being the best dad in the world. Sorry I didn't get you a gift. This is all I've got. Years later, at the father's death, when the son was going through his father's possessions, he discovered within a special compartment of his father's wallet the envelope, the note, the dime, the nickel, and the two pennies that his father had carried with him all those years. Why? Why, of all things, the father and son had experienced together, was this the token of remembrance, the most precious reminder of their relationship? Why? Because it was given in pure love and pure gratitude. Father's Day reminds us the most precious gift of all shared between a father and his children are the gifts of pure love and pure gratitude. And on this feast of the body and blood of Christ, may God bless all fathers and all who stand in their place with his grace, his strength, his encouragement, his courage, and love. And may the love that sh fathers shower upon their children and families be returned to them 
a thousand times over. I believe in one God, the Father of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, beyond God made, consubstantial of the Father, the real of all things is made, for us and for our salvation. Let us pray. Empowered by God's grace, we offer these petitions. For thanksgiving of all God's gifts, may celebration and may our celebration today reflect our gratitude for all that God has done for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For a desire to live out what we celebrate. May this Eucharist strengthen us to care for one another. We pray to the Lord. Glory to God. For all fathers, grandfathers, godfathers, and all who stand in their place, may they be blessed for all they do for their families. We pray to the Lord. Glory to God. For first responders, members of the armed forces, healthcare workers, and all who risk their lives for the protection of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all that are ill and suffer in mind, body, or spirit, and for all who have asked us for prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who have died, may they follow Jesus, the risen Lord, into the kingdom of light and peace. <coughs> for all deceased fathers, and especially for Thomas F. Ilhui and Josephine and John Hassini. For whom we, we, we remember at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord of life, give us your strength and your grace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory continues on page number 331, O Sacrament Most Holy.
When supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of God. The mystery of faith.
memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Leonard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone before us into the fullness of your peace. Have mercy on us all, that with the blessed Mother of Jesus, with Joseph, her spouse, and all your saints, we may inherit eternal life and come to praise you forever through Jesus, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
as is our tradition here at Resurrection, in the vestibule there are baskets of candy for all the fathers here present. Uh, father, of course, being an elastic term, both lay and clerical, so it applies not only to the simple father, but to the holy monsignor. <laughs> So if there's any candy left over, it's mano a mano, Georgia and Simeon versus my three giant bodyguard servers, the Monon brothers. <laughs> my money's on the Monones. <laughs> Let us pray. Father, fill us with joy as we share in your divine life. Keep us strong in the power of the Eucharist. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Amen. And the recessional hymn may be found on page number 507, Faith of Our Father.